What's going on YouTube? It's Austin here. You can't see me because we're going to skip all the fun fancy intros and just get straight into this one. Keep it nice and short as sweet as it can be. Um, in front of me, I've got my piston laid out. I've got all my piston rings laid out, my wrist pin, circlips, a few tools I'm going to be using. And the purpose of this video is just going to be to show you how to prepare your piston for install. Now obviously this is specific to a four-stroke piston for a Yamaha YFZ450R. So before you go ahead and use this video as your reference, make sure that you pick up an owner's manual. I've got one sitting over here, which I'll be referencing. And you wanna make sure you've got all the tools, the chemicals, and all the parts that you're gonna need based off of what the manual recommends. But that being said, uh, I'm gonna just kinda of give you this video to work off of as a general guide. And if you've got a YFZ450R yourself, then you'll probably find this especially useful. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. So the first thing I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna open up my circlips and a special note about these, if you've never been warned, uh, installing them can be a bit tricky. So uh, if these go flying across the room, you can easily lose them. And, uh, and so you wanna make sure that whenever you're doing this job, that you're doing it somewhere where uh, it's very clean and organized, you don't wanna be in a real messy garage um, or in somewhere that's dimly lit or I mean god forbid you're doing it somewhere where there's like gravel or something uh, because if this goes flying off you might never find it again and then your entire install is completely shot uh, for the time being so uh, you only want to install one to start with the other one you don't install until the pistons completely on the quad uh, I'm gonna go ahead and install the one that goes on the right side so this is my intake side my exhaust side left, right, and so I'm gonna go ahead and put this one in here. All right, so I just got that pin in. I had to go off camera because I didn't have really good leverage from the kind of angle the camera's at to work with. But essentially what I did is I put one end in here, there's a little notch, and then you uh, kind of rotate it around. You're gonna to get to right here, and I actually use the back side of this guy so I don't scratch it. And uh, with the back side of this tool, I can push down this way until I got this edge in. And then I don't want any gap anywhere near here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this hook, stick it in here, and I'm just gonna pull and sort of move this guy, if I can see you while doing it, out of the way. And so now my gap is over here, completely clear of this little cutout, and we're all set and ready to go. And just for demonstration, you can see now, I put my piston pin here, can't come out. So we're ready to go ahead and move on to the rings. All right, so for the rings, what you're gonna need to do is, at least I think it's helpful, is mark out where each ring is gonna go on your piston. I'm just using a Sharpie here. It's not gonna do anything at all. Uh, so first I'm gonna do is mark dead center on the intake side flip it around and find the dead center on the exhaust side and I'm going to mark that. The easiest way in this case to find that is that I've got these three oil drilled holes on the back and the front of the skirt so the center one is going to line up with straight up and down here. Then you need to go from there several degrees in each direction for each ring. So I'm gonna start by going 30 degrees off of my left for the first one. And that is gonna be right about there. Need to do the same thing on the right hand side right about there. And then we also need the same thing for this side here. And then finally, there's gonna be another one that's just a few degrees beyond that goes right there. So, 
if you look at it here now, you can see I have intake and exhaust side marked in the dead center. These are worked out from each side, top and bottom. And the bonus is this little guy down here. We'll get to what each one of these is going to be for in a minute, but this is kind of where you're going to start out. Um, again, this is going off of a picture in my manual, so it's pretty easy to line up and figure out. You're probably going to want your own manual for your own bike um, to make sure. You can also go off the piston manufacturer recommendations if it's a different set of rings maybe than uh, what came in your bike, but uh, the JE piston I'm working with doesn't have any instructions with it, and it has an identical set of uh, rings as does the OEM piston. So I'm working off of the OEM manual to line those up correctly. So at least according to my manual, what you're going to see is that there is markings for A, B, C, D, and E, which is the five marks that I made here on my piston. And those are for your top ring, your second ring, your upper oil ring, your oil expander, and your lower oil ring. And these are all laid out here in front of me. Now, Yamaha lists it in order from top to bottom, but it doesn't make a difference which order you go in, and it's much easier to work from bottom to top. So instead of going with A, B, C, D, E in the order of top to bottom, I'm just going to go ahead and mark 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and I'm going to start with my bottom oil ring and then work my way up to the top ring. So that's the order that I'm going to mark these out in. And that way, just for my own workflow, for my own head, it's easier to uh, kind of wrap my mind around uh, the process and making sure that it goes smoothly. Now before I jump into this, I did go ahead and flip the piston around because the orientation now matches what I'm looking at in my manual. I also did see that this mark actually belongs over here on this side. So I'm going to go ahead and mark that one correctly right there. And then I'm going to go ahead and mark down the order of each of the rings. Uh, and then we'll jump into actually putting them on. Okay, so now you can see what I'm working with here. Apologize for the poor handwriting, especially in Sharpie on metal. But uh, anyhow, we've got one, two, three, four, five. So we've got the lower oil ring, the oil expander, we've got the upper oil ring, we've got our second ring and our top ring. So we're going to put them on in this exact order. We're going to disregard that mark. Uh, helpfully, you know, you don't have a number next to it. So it should be pretty clear not to put anything there. And worst case, uh, if you do make that mistake, you just go back, double check before you get this thing actually installed and you're just going to slide it over. So it should be good to go. All right, so over here we've got our two oil rings and our oil expander. Um, we're gonna go ahead and just grab one of these. Neither of them are different from one another and they do not have any markings indicating a top or a bottom. So it's pretty straightforward as far as getting that put on. Now those guys generally go on pretty easy. You're not going to have to do a lot to get them on there, um, but obviously do be careful because you don't want to uh, you don't want to force anything or scratch anything up. Okay, Let me get that oil expander in there. All right, I just brought this guy back into view. Um, I had to do a little bit of work just to get everyone to get along nicely, but we got our gap in here at two. We've got our other gap still maintaining over here at one. So everyone's getting along now. Um, and we'll go ahead and put in that last ring. And we're going to go ahead and put it in at three. So we've got three worked out just fine. Our other ring is still right here where it belongs at two. And we go back and check, and we're right on the money at one. So we can now move on to our last two rings. Now, here's a, a few things I want to point out about this part. One, you're going to have these markings here. You want those markings facing up. So this way as opposed to that way. 
both rings have them. A little more difficult to see on this one, although we may be able to get it in focus, but anyhow, there is a faint N right here. And so, again, you wanna just check, make sure that you have your markings facing the correct direction. Another thing is, and this might not be the case on all pistons, but it certainly is with this one, this ring only fits in this groove, it does not fit in this groove. So it's pretty hard to mess this part up in terms of getting your top and second rings backwards. Um, but do check and make sure that you've got the correct rings in the correct places. Make sure that you've got the letter facing up. Uh, just, you know, always double check your instructions, double check everything. So since we're on our fourth ring, we are gonna go ahead and go to four. Now these ones are bigger, they're stiffer, um, and they can take a bit more work to get in. Not bad at all, but uh, you just need to be a little more careful. You don't want to scratch anything up, obviously. So be gentle. All right, so we are lined up at four here. Now, you are gonna notice that there's quite a bit of gap here, and that is because this is gonna go ahead and compress when we actually get it into the cylinder, which we don't have on us today. Um, but that is, uh, that is how that works. All right, now we're under our fifth and final ring. So I'm gonna work it into the groove here. There we go. Okay, and with that, we've got our piston actually ready to go in the bike. Um, it, ready to go in the cylinder, I should say. Um, so we can take it down to the garage now and put it on the rod. Um, you do wanna double check, make sure your rings are still in the correct position. Uh, you're not gonna only wanna double check that now, but you're gonna wanna make sure, especially when you actually go to put that cylinder on, that you go ahead and double check that all your rings are still where they belong and they haven't moved on you. So we can go around and just go ahead and confirm everything's still lined up properly. And it is, it's probably a bit hard to tell on frame, but uh, anyhow, so this guy's ready to go. Um, I don't have my cylinder on me, so all we're gonna do is go down, put it on the rod and finish this up for today. All right, you can see I've got my motor here in front of me. Um, ideally, you would have done a better job of cleaning your bike before you did this than I did but uh, I made the error of not doing a good enough job washing it while I was at the race. And once I got home to my apartment and started tearing it down, I didn't really have the ability to take it anywhere and wash it. So we're working with what we got right now. So uh, I've got my rod here sticking out from this mound of paper towel. That's gonna make sure that my uh, other clip doesn't fall down into the motor because the only thing worse than having the clip go flying off in your garage is having it fall into the bottom of your motor, which can be an absolute disaster. Um, so we're gonna take our ready to install piston out of the box over here. We're going to ensure that we've got our exhaust and intake side sorted out. Luckily for the Yamaha with five valves, it's pretty easy to figure out which side is which. And we're just gonna set it right here on top of our rod. With that sitting there, because I only have one hand to work with right now, I'm going to go ahead and grab my wrist pin, which you may or may not have seen before. It's been WPC coated. And I'm going to go ahead and install some Molly onto here. And that's going to go ahead and make this guy uh, properly lubricated for install. Um, probably going to be the case with most bikes, but again, check your manual. Make sure you're using the correct lubricant for doing this job. All right, I got this to a point where I can film again. I went ahead and put some Molly grease on the wrist pin, lined everything up. Gonna go ahead and slide that in here now. And then the last thing to do is put on the other circlip using the exact same method that I showed earlier in this video. And that's gonna take two hands and I don't have my tripod on me, so I'm gonna have to uh, pretty much cut it there. But, um, Stay tuned for another video on getting this top end together um, because next time obviously will be the cylinder and the cylinder head and all that good stuff. Um, and there is more to this. I mean, you're definitely gonna wanna get
get oil on those rings. You're going to want to get oil on the side skirts. You're going to want to make sure everything is lubricated. This is not the end of the process, but like I said, this is the video just to get your piston sort of prepped and ready. So stay tuned for more videos and I uh, hope this helps you out. Thanks.